Hello and welcome to lecture 7 in thermal chemistry. Today we're going to look at some multi-step problems. As always, I'm providing you with the knowledge outcomes um, prescribed by Alberta Learning. Hopefully you're keeping track on how you're progressing with this material. These, of course, will form the basis for um, the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. In terms of multi-step problems, there's no new theory in this lecture beyond the material we've covered to date in this unit. Um, we've done much of the quantitative work. In this lecture, though, we bring it together into more complex calculations. We call them multi-step problems. And um, you may well have mastered the various uh, lectures to date, but deciding which ones to apply in a multi-step problem is a further skill that uh, you have to develop. Under the, under the course. Here's an example. We're talking about the partial decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate here. And here's the thermochemical equation for it. You'll see that uh, it's an endothermic reaction and that to decompose two moles of uh, baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate, requires the input of 129.2 kilojoules of energy. The question wants you to solve for the energy requirements to decompose or partially decompose 100.0 kilograms of the same material. So there's two steps here. First of all, it looks like we need to determine a molar enthalpy change to decompose a single mole of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then we have to apply a stoichiometry piece to determine the enthalpy change to decompose 100.0 kilograms of the, the baking soda. So the first step then is to determine a molar enthalpy change. Delta HM equals delta H over N. In this case, it's 129.2 kilojoules divided by 2 moles. So our molar enthalpy change then is positive 64.6. In English, we would say to partially decompose a single mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate in accordance with the reaction, we'd have to input 64.6 kilojoules of energy. Now we have to determine how many moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate there are in 100 kilograms. N equals M over M. 100 kilograms divided by the molar mass. 100 kilograms divided by the molar mass. You'll see there's a conversion factor here. Because molar mass is expressed in grams, we have to convert this 100.0 kilograms into grams by multiplying by 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram. That's what the conversion factor here is in the bracket. In the end, we're talking about 1,190 moles of baking soda. Total enthalpy change then will equal the number of moles multiplied by the molar enthalpy change. In this case, 1190 moles times 64.6 kilojoules per mole. We end up getting 76,874 kilojoules. And applying significant digits to that, I think the question called upon us to use three significant digits. The total enthalpy required to uh, partially decompose the, the material is 7.69 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules. In English, in, in answering the question, we might say that the partial decomposition of 100.0 kilograms of sodium hydrogen carbonate requires the input of 6.79 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules of energy. So that was a multi-step problem. You see it brought in some grade 11 stoichiometry, and that's quite common in this area. Here's another example. It's a roasting process. We're roasting 50.0 kilograms of zinc sulfide ore. And uh, so here's our target equation. You'll see that the target equation is the roasting process. And to solve for its enthalpy, in the last question we were given the enthalpy for the partial decomposition. To solve the enthalpy here though, we have to employ Hess's law. And they give us a, a system of equations. Um, so the first piece of this will be a Hess's law solution. And the second piece again will be a stoichiometry piece. Um, I think, um, and that's what we say here. Let's, let's look at Hess's law and then let's do some stoichiometry. I think in one fell swoop, I've done the Hess's law piece for you, yes. And you'll see I've, I've flipped equation one, I left equation two and three alone, and then I added them to the target. We end up getting an enthalpy for the equation of negative 441.3 kilojoules. And that's to roast a single mole of the zinc sulfide ore. Uh, the question is, how much energy is required to roast 50.0 kilograms? So the second piece then is to convert that mass value into moles. 
So we take the 50.0 kilograms, we convert it into grams, and then we multiply by one mole over the molar mass, and that gives us 512.925 dot 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 moles of the zinc sulfide. Then we do a total enthalpy calculation. Total enthalpy equals molar enthalpy times uh, number of moles, and um, plug in our values. We've got 512.925 dot 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 moles of the zinc sulfide multiplied by the 441.3 kilojoules it requires to to roast a single mole. We end up getting a value at uh, negative 2.26 times 10 to the 5 kilojoules of energy. In English then, roasting 50.0 kilograms of zinc sulfide ore releases 2.26 times 10 to the 5 kilojoules of energy. So these questions um, can come at you from different directions. I've done two relatively straightforward ones. Um, your best practice is to do quite a number of these questions and to think of it sort of on a meta level in terms of, not in terms of the chemistry, but in terms of what chemistry you have to apply to solve the problem. Um, thank you, and I hope you found that of some help. My next lecture concludes the unit, and it'll be on um, collision theory. And thank you for listening.